the, the way, way God sees you. Who are you? Yeah, you, right there. I bet you know of a lot of ways to answer that question. You could tell us your name, first and last, the day you were born, your grade in school. You might even tell us the street you live on. You could give your height and your eye color. You might even tell us about your parents or your siblings. And all of those things would give us a picture of who you are on the outside. But if you follow Jesus, there's something even more important happening on the inside. In the Bible, we discover truths that Jesus spoke and promises that God inspired people like the Apostle Paul to write down. And these truths paint a powerful picture of who you truly are. God says that you are a child of God. You are a friend of Jesus. You are a brand new person in Christ. You are forgiven. You are uniquely designed for good works that only you can do. You can go to God at any time for any reason. God will provide everything you need. That, my friends, is the true story of who you are. And it's a wonderful feeling. When you live with confidence, knowing that you are already loved and chosen, others can see God at work in you. That's why confidence is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. reason why my feet can't stop my heart can't help but sing it's a wonderful feeling to feel your love for me to feel the joy you bring your love is the answer so I sing to you the reason is you Jesus Set me free And I'm thankful that you love me Whoa.
July's monthly Bible verse says, God began a good work in you, and I am sure that he will carry it on until it is completed. That will be on the day Christ Jesus returns. Philippians chapter 1 verses 6. And our bottom line says, Use what God has given you to stand strong. All right, kids, let's press play. Get in the mix and open our ears and listen to today's story about God's armor. <laughs> What's up, people? I'm Graham, and I'll be your DJ for today's experience as we try to get to the bottom of this thing called confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. I know I need confidence, especially when I'm about to do something I've never done before, like DJ. But don't worry, I'll be ready as soon as I gear up. Let's do this. Now I'm ready. Who's up for some music? Hit it. Oh, sounds like I really, sounds like I really, sounds like I really, I really scratched it good, but no scratches on me. Not with my DJ armor on, I'm standing strong. In today's story, you'll hear about a different kind of armor that will help you stand strong. Now, let me play us out. <laughs> I think I've invented a new dance. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, Chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. The Apostle Paul spent his last two years as a prisoner in Rome. But even though he wasn't free to travel, he shared God's truth with everyone who visited and often wrote strong letters to the churches he had started. One of those letters went to the believers at the church in Ephesus. Finally, let the Lord make you strong. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor, then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Now, armor isn't something we see every day. Maybe you think of this, or this. But remember, Paul wrote this letter when he was in prison. In the book of Acts, his friend Luke explains, When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself, but a soldier guarded him. This means that Paul was guarded by at least one Roman soldier every single hour of the day. In fact, Paul was probably even chained to that soldier. So every day, Paul had a great opportunity to study this armor in real detail. He knew that when dressed up in armor, a Roman soldier could withstand any attack by an enemy. Paul also knew that the main enemy we face isn't one we can see. Our fight is not against human beings. It is against the rulers, the authorities, and the powers of this dark world. It is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world. So put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything. And after you have done everything you can, you will still be standing. See, our fight is not with human beings. Paul reminds us that the real enemy is spiritual forces of evil. Now that might sound really weird and creepy, but it's actually very simple. God has an enemy called Satan. Now we know at the end Satan is defeated, but right now Satan is trying to mess with what God loves most, people. We're fighting a battle with an enemy we can't see. And because of this, Paul says, we need a very special kind of armor. So remain strong in the faith. Put the belt of truth around your waist. A belt tied up loose clothing and held weapons, so a soldier was all ready to go. 
God wants us to prepare ourselves with the truth that he loves us and is always with us, and that he'll give us the wisdom to face any tough decision we have to make. Put the armor of godliness on your chest. This piece, sometimes called a breastplate, protected a soldier's heart and lungs and stomach. You know, all the important stuff. Paul says our protection is godliness. That means simply following God and what we do and say by loving God and loving others. It's our best defense against the enemy. Wear on your feet what will prepare you to tell the good news of peace. Check these out. Kind of sandals, kind of cleats. Roman soldiers actually wore shoes with nails sticking out of the bottom so they could get a good grip on rough and rocky roads. Paul says the way we can get a grip is to share the message of God's peace with everybody we meet, wherever our feet will take us. Thanks to Jesus, everyone can have peace with God. Also, pick up the shield of faith. With it, you can put out all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Rejected! A Roman soldier's shield was everything. Not only could a soldier block arrows and swords and spears, but he could get right behind this and charge, pushing back the enemy. And that's exactly what strong faith in God and his promises can do for us. Maybe the enemy tries to sneak in with the thought that God doesn't love me. But you can block that right away because you know that nothing can separate you from God's love. He promises that. Or maybe you're struck with a wave of doubt that you can't make a hard choice. But you can block that when you remember that God promises to guide your steps when you trust him. Put on the helmet of salvation. A helmet protects just what you think, your head and mind. The enemy likes to sneak attack with small lies and spiraling thoughts of negativity. But if you put on the helmet of salvation, trusting in God and following Jesus, That'll protect your mind. And take the sword of the Holy Spirit. The sword is God's word. When the enemy attacks, Paul says we have a way to fight back. Our weapon is the sword of God's word. Jesus himself used God's words from scripture when he was tempted by Satan. As Paul says, put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything. And after you have done everything you can, you will still be standing. When you discover God's words written down in the Bible and hold them in your head and your heart, you can stand up to any attack by the enemy. Okay, so everybody knows we're going to have trouble in this world. We're going to break bones, get splinters, we're gonna get into arguments with friends and family members, Things are going to happen. But the Apostle Paul wrote that we're also going to face troubles we can't even see. So we'd better gear up. We've gotta put on God's armor. It's not the kind of armor you can see, but it is the kind of armor that will prepare you for the troubles you don't see. With God's armor, you can be protected from things like a bad attitude or negative thoughts. It can shield you from things that can make you wanna doubt what's true. Plus, Paul wrote that God has given you a weapon. It's true. Paul wrote that God's word is like a sword. When voices inside try to tell you you're not good enough or that you don't matter, your sword can help you fight back with the truth. And the truth is, you do matter. And God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to save you from your sins. So, troubles will come, the ones you can see and the ones you can't. But the armor God has given you will help you stand strong through it all. That's the one thing to remember today. Use what God has given you to stand strong. Gear up! That way, whatever happens, you'll be ready. I think I make a pretty confident DJ, don't you? I gave an excellent performance on the turntable. Some might even say record breaking. Or record scratching, anyway. <laughs> I'll see you next time. All right, let's get ready for our review game. Let's see if you all remember what happened in today's story. First question, what is confidence? 
confidence is learning to see yourself the way that God sees you. Next question. The bottom line for this week is, use what God has given you to what? The answer is stand strong. Use what God has given you to stand strong. What does Paul say to put on to help us to stand strong against Satan? Paul says to put on God's armor. We have to put on God's armor every single day so that we can stand strong against Satan. Next question. What item below is included in God's armor? Is it A, Air Jordan retro shoes, B, shield of faith, C, gauntlets on your hands, or D, all of the above? The answer is B, the shield of faith. That is one of the items included in God's armor, but there are a couple others as well. Last question, what are some actions that you can put into practice that will help you put on God's armor daily? A couple of examples are, read the Bible, memorize scriptures, go to church, pray continually, worship and praise God, and listen to Christian songs as well as sing them. That is ways that we can continually put on our armor of God daily. All right, thank you all so much for listening in today. Let's get ready for our last worship song. Can't wait to see you all next week. Bye.
Good and you never change your